Before I get into this teardown, I just want to say that I wouldn't be here on Christmas Eve in the afternoon starting a teardown if it wasn't for the support of my wife. There's no way anyone else on the planet would ever put up with this, but she does. And for that, you guys should thank her. So today we're taking apart a 3.5 liter front wheel drive variant of the EcoBoost. This is out of a Taurus SHO or a Ford Flex. And I bought this engine for a reason. I needed the oil pan and a timing cover for an engine from one of our cars that was damaged in an accident, it still runs, but I need to make it right before I sell it. So I needed those parts and this core came around. Now, when this core got delivered, it had no oil pan on it, which was cool. But they came up with an oil pan, so no hard feelings there. So we're gonna take this thing apart so I can get that other engine fixed. And we're gonna see what went wrong with this EcoBoost. This is not the first V6 EcoBoost I've had on this channel. I had one that came out of an 11 or 12 F-150. And in that teardown video, I called the timing chain idler a water pump. And I was corrected about seven million times. I was wrong. I make mistakes. I didn't even look at it. I'll be the first to admit that. But today we're going to take this core apart. I hope I can name all of the parts correctly, but I'm just the guy zipping bolts out until parts fall off. You guys know the way this works. First thing I'm going to do is pull the spark plugs and the coils out. We'll take a look at the plugs and see if we can have any hints or clues as to why this is a core. Oh, that one's got the boot stuck in it. That's gonna be fun. This is already off to a great start. There we go. That was great. These are factory plugs, which is good, but they are gapped a lot farther than they're supposed to be. But I don't see any damage on any electrodes or tips. So none of these plugs were mechanically regapped. It's a good sign so far. Now that we've pulled the plugs, it's time to see if it turns over. We'll see if it's locked up or not. See how hard of a teardown this is going to be. Well, it turns over. That's a good sign. hearing things in there. Come in. It actually sounds like something wants out. We'll go all the way over. Oh man, stuff is loose in there. I cannot stress the importance of tightening bolts. Well, at least this will come apart pretty easy. Famous last words. Next thing on the agenda is get this intake manifold out of the way. Well, I thought I had all the bolts out. Maybe it just needs a little nudge. Yeah, that's all she needed. Fuel line's in the way. Well, this will give you guys an idea of how the fuel system is laid out in this engine. You've got your high pressure fuel pump here. These are your rails. The injectors are buried down there. And it looks like this has been off before because there's different color RTV than I'm used to seeing on Ford engines. It's got some copper gasket material. Cool. That'll do it. The inside of these ports, top of the valves look normal for a DI engine with miles on it. This is disgusting. This is why port injection, at least port injection and direct injection, will always be superior as far as longevity is concerned. Outside of their dirty condition, I don't see any debris or anything that's not supposed to be in there. Just lots and lots and lots of carbon. Did I mention it's dirty? Now this engine only came with one turbo, the one on the front was already removed when I got it, but the one on the rear is still here. 
and it appears that someone used it as a ninja blender. It is not designed for that. Do not do that. Also make sure you have an air filter in your car. So we're gonna go ahead and get this pulled. I don't think it's gonna be too bad. These typically aren't. Let's go ahead and start zipping some bolts out. All right, so there's some of the coolant and yes, coolant lines here. Those are gonna come off with the turbo. Then we're gonna pull the heat shield. We're gonna see if we can pull the turbo and the manifold as one unit. The original plan was to take the turbo and manifold off together. Uh, this one of these bolts is already kind of rounded off. So let's get uh, this bracket out of the way and see if I can break those bolts off. They usually break. What is going on here? That's a first. Uh, I think it's just the wrong size. Perfect. I am shocked. Now I'm going to remove the oil drain and then I've got one bolt on the support bracket. Turbo should come off. There we are. We're going to take a look at this turbo at the end of the video. I have a feeling that this has something to do with the condition of this engine. There was no way that was coming off with the turbo on. Not easily anyway. Next, I'm going to get the high pressure fuel pump off the top of the valve cover. I'm also going to remove the feed lines for the rails as they will impede valve cover removal. Let's start with the front valve cover. It's actually a lot cleaner than I expected. This is surprisingly cleaner than I expected. There's not a lot of oil deposits or varnish. Looks pretty decent in here. Let's go to the next. This side is significantly less good. It's got a bunch of oil deposits, or is that, nope, RTV on the cam. Yeah, we don't want that cam to leak. Shiny stuff on the top of the cam cap bolts. A lot more oil deposits and varnish. I bet the crankcase ventilation runs through this head. Here's some silvery goodness, top of the cam cap bolts. Where do you think that metal came from? I bet we'll find out. Now we need to pull the timing cover, and to do that, we need to get the crank pulley, this bracket out of the way. We're going to start with the crank pulley. I know this looks like it's going to wobble. Believe me, I've used only the utmost care in taking care of this puller. Looking around this timing cover, I see a lot of RTV that doesn't look like it belongs there. Uh, you guys know how I feel about that, but we got to remove this timing cover without breaking it. This is the main reason I bought this engine, that and the oil pan, which I got later. So let's see if we can get this off carefully. That side feels a little stronger. There's a lot of RTV here. A lot more than necessary. We're making some progress here. It just seems to be stuck maybe at this dowel. No, it's not the dowel. It's just the volume of RTV over here. Now we're getting it. Whoa. 
Wow, that is a lot of RTV. Look how much RTV there is on this timing cover. No wonder it was so hard to come off. So there's some good things in here. Um, it looks like someone put a new water pump, timing chain, tensioner, and rails in it, which is great. Someone was taking care of this. However, whoever serviced this, my God, man, lay off the RTV. You don't need this much. You just, you just don't. This is like at least twice as much as you could use. At least. So much RTV. Wonder what we're going to find in the pickup. But this is all new parts. This is that water pump that leaks internally if it gets bad enough. Now there is a weep hole. I was corrected in the last video. There's a weep hole that is in the front of the block here by the accessories. However, if that is ignored long enough, the bearings will go in the water pump and it will leak coolant into the crankcase. That does to get happen. to the timing chain and get all this stuff off, I've got to pull the variable valve timing actuators and solenoids out. So we're going to get these off and then we'll get the timing chain peeled off this engine. Next, pull the timing chain tensioner. Oh, shiny oil. It's metally. Save that for later. It's like 50 miles long. I don't know if this is going to come out or not. I should probably get something to catch the fluid that comes out of this, right? Yes, that's what we're going to do. I do need to get this out of the way of the water pump. So we use a small wrench. And then we can swing that. See if this makes a mess. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. This is nice and tight. Not going to say that. It's an aftermarket part. Let's talk about this water pump for a second. As you can see, it's got two gaskets on it, an outer and an inner. And between the two, you'll find this little cavity here. And I'll show you the purpose of that this cavity. This is also a cavity that corresponds to the one in the water pump. And when this gasket goes bad, this outer gasket keeps the coolant in this chamber here, which then moves this way towards the front of the block. And that's where the weep hole is, right there. And as you can see, this weep hole has been pushing coolant out at some point in this engine's life. This is all staining from coolant coming out of that weep hole right there. Now I'm going to crack the cam caps loose so I can get the cams out. Well, there's some bearing material. Deep, deep grooves. I've never seen grooves this deep on an engine. I mean, they're really deep. Cams are wasted. Cam caps, really rough, of course, as you'd expect. The intake cam. Yeah, look at those caps. Even the uh, lobe for the fuel pump is destroyed. There's the piston with the roller. Man, these are a lot rougher than I expected. The head is also torn up pretty bad. And this is not as bad looking as the other side appears to be as far as how clean it is. I am a little nervous about the next side. Let's get these head bolts cracked loose. Oh yeah, I forgot. Need to pull the cam sensors out to get to the rear upper. The 
Before I zip these head bolts all the way out, there are a couple of small bolts that hold the head to the block here on either side. I'm gonna get those out of the way. So let's get that moved. This head should come right off. Should. I think it will. Everything looks pretty good. I don't see any marks from the piston striking the cylinder head. Some vertical lines, but nothing, no really deep grooves. Can't really feel any of them. So far, so good. Let's turn this thing over, see if we can figure out where that noise is coming from. Now we're going to crack the cam cast loose on the rear cylinder head. These cam caps are equally bad. Cams are very grooved, lots of bearing material on them. I am not surprised now. The head also has some significant damage in the journal area. Just like the other side. Head should come right off, I hope. This also looks pretty good. Cylinder walls look nice, but I haven't checked to see if the rods have any. This side also looks really nice. The cylinder walls are good. No damage on the top of the pistons, but I haven't checked for adjustable rods yet. So let's try this one. Oh, just a little bit. And a little bit more. A lot bit more. Let's try this side. Yeah. Five out of six ain't bad, I guess. It's passing grade. The combustion chambers all look nice. I don't see any signs of damage whatsoever. Same with this head. I don't see any issues at all. Now we're gonna flip this over. Likely make a mess, but it's okay. Perfect. This engine has that new bearing infused oil. That's what you're seeing, the light streaks there. It's coming out of this engine. Sparkles. I fully expected to find this thing completely packed with RTV, but it's packed with some other stuff. What else is in here? What is this? What is that? Let's get that. Come here. That's part of a Looks like a timing chain component. That's not good. And then we've got some bearing foil. Pretty large chunks. Ooh, there's a big chunk of something in here. We can just bend this up. We're not going to reuse this. Look at that. These aren't gold flakes. These are bearing flakes. Not worth as much. Lots of them. We just got to put these back and this thing will be good to go. So much. How does it hold so much? Here's that piece of what I'm considering to be timing guide. I think maybe what happened is whoever put a timing set in this did not clean out the pickup and this broke off at some point in the removal process or didn't got dropped. Well, the pickup found it, but is that enough to clog it? I don't know. Next, I'm going to pull the pickup tube and the oil pump. Let's get this oil pump apart, see what the inside looks like. Well, 
That looks yummy. Those are, ooh, it's gritty. It's never supposed to feel like that. There's grooves on the outside, groove, a lot of damage to the inside, and small gear, geez. Housing has grooves in it. Oil pump is wasted. I think it was wasted from oil starvation and metal running through it, not because it's the culprit. Here are some of the grooves on the outer housing. And the small gear, you can see how sparkly it is. There's the damage on the outside of the big gear. And yeah, there's a lot of wear and marks and scratches on this. Same with that housing. This thing has a parts master oil filter that has a couple dings in it. Just superficial damage, I'm sure. Now let's pull the block girdle. Let's see what these look like. All right, that's wrong. That one doesn't feel great. Let's turn this over a little bit. Oh, listen to the sounds. Every time they change direction, they knock. That one's got a little bit of play there. That's how it's adjustable. That's probably how Nissan's variable compression works. I'm kidding. I would love to tear one of those engines down. Yeah, this is going to have damage in every journal. I guarantee it. Or your money back. We're going to start cracking the rod caps loose, pulling the pistons out one by one. Oh. Well, that's not good. Rod bearing number six is completely spun. And I don't know if I'm going to be able to get this out easily. Nope, I'm going to have to use some tools for that. I would never do this on a good rod, but on a bad one, um, well, it doesn't really matter. So I'm going to try to get this off. As you can see, it looks like the bearing is welded. So we're going to give it a couple taps. Normally, I would never do this to a rod, but uh, this rod is going to be trash and the bearing is welded to it. So I'm gonna give this a couple taps to try to break this free. There we go. And now my punch is stuck. Did not count on that one, nope. Boy, that was a, a mistake, wasn't it? If only I could go back. Now we can get it out without risking anything. That bearing is not spun. It is not good. All right, now for the next two cylinders. That bearing is spun, not as bad as the others, but definitely spun. Yep, those are spun too. And now for the last two cylinders. That one isn't as bad as the others. Yep, those are definitely spun too. I'm gonna start out with the good. The pistons, no signs of issues whatsoever. Unlike the last EcoBoost we tore down, the last V6, where the oil rings were carboned into their ring land, these are not like that. They're actually pretty clean, they move freely. However, the bearings, well, not good. It has one not even acceptable bearing. That was the one that didn't knock. These are all thinner than they're supposed to be, misshaped. You can see the discoloring in the rod from the heat. It gets worse as you get away from the oil pump. Look at that. 
That one's really bad, and it gets even worse down here. I'm surprised this engine turned over at all. And I can't even get that rod bearing out. It's part of the rod now. No oil, no oil will do that. I get a lot of flack for the amount of fluids that hit the ground in my video. Everyone tells me I need one of those trays that fit over my engine stand so it collects all the fluid when I turn these blocks over. And you are all correct. I'm not going to argue with you. But fluid is going to hit the ground when you're working on cars, dismantling cars. It's a dirty industry. It's virtually impossible to keep the floor perfect all of the time. But I do care a lot about the concrete in this place, which is why we got away from the granule type of absorbent and we use pig mat. We use, this stuff's made by New Pig. We've used this stuff for three and a half years since we've been in this location and it works really good. It's a lot faster. You don't have to wait for anything to get soaked up. You don't have to remember to go back and sweep it up. And when you run over it with a forklift, it doesn't become part of the floor. I can't say enough good stuff about this. It has saved my concrete. In order to get to the main cap side bolts, I have to take the oil filter housing off. All right, let's get these main caps off so we can pull the crank. Main bearings, pretty rough. Not spun at least, but still pretty chewed up. There's definitely been some metal through here and not enough oil. The main journals on this crank are pretty decent, but the rod journals are trashed. This crank is destined for the scrap bin with damage in so many areas. Let's talk about the turbo I pulled off of this engine. As you can tell, the compressor wheel suffered extensive damage has lots of shaft play and even makes contact with the compressor housing. And the reason it makes contact with the housing and has so much damage is there is no exhaust wheel. The shaft is broken and those parts likely ended up on top of one of the converters. When this happens, hot oil is injected into the exhaust, that's the oil used to lubricate the turbo, and it can evacuate an oil pan quickly, maybe a minute or two, maybe three minutes max. There were likely signs that this was happening and those signs were likely ignored and that's what led to the damage we found inside of this engine. I feel kind of bad about this teardown, not so much for my side of things, but for whoever owned the car that engine came from. They likely put a ton of money into having the water pump and timing chain replaced. They replaced all the associated parts at that time. I don't think that was done at a dealership. There was way too much RTV way too much RTV and all those parts were aftermarket which you don't usually find with dealer work. Whoever did that job was pretty sloppy but I don't think that's what killed that engine. I think the turbo is what killed that engine. When the turbos go it will run the engine out of oil if it's ignored and it happens pretty quick but not so quick that you can't pull over and shut the car off. I'm sure there were tons of warning signs. It was probably misfiring. It was smoking really bad but whoever was driving continued to drive it which is why I don't feel that bad about this. I've blown turbos in my own car and you have time to pull over and turn the key off. You don't have to drive until your engine blows up. Well, this person did. I hope you enjoyed this teardown. If you'd like to buy parts off of this engine, I'm going to leave our email in the video description. And as always, I love all the comments, all the feedback, and even the criticism. I love it all. I wish you guys a happy holiday and I'll catch you on the next teardown.